Hey guys, a new video. Uh, another impressions video. Uh, now, I am still playing Dragon Quest VIII. Uh, I'm probably not going to do a video on it. I did my first impressions, and if I do another video, it's just going to be kind of like reiterating like the same thoughts I had during that video. But I am enjoying it. I got past that, that boss. Uh, I, I just took a couple hours to sit down and grind out metal slimes, and the boss went from very difficult to insultingly easy. Uh, I beat him like my first try. Multi heal is like ridiculous, uh, but I'm making small progress in that game. But I decided to play another game alongside it, um, and that is Ease Chronicles One and Two. Now, the Ease series, I hear such great things from uh, Dustin Christ and and so many others I hear on YouTube, uh, and it's it's an RPG series I never played. Uh, I never I I don't know I don't know why I I oh I did like. I, I kind of had access to them, but I just never, I don't know, I just never felt the need to pick up and play them. I don't know why, but uh, ever since that Steam sale a while back, I picked up uh, Ease 1 and 2, uh, Ease Origin, and Ease Oath of Algana, and I thought, you know what, let's get into the series, let's dive in uh, with the beginning, uh, with uh, books 1 and 2. Uh, these are like kind of updated versions, I guess, like uh, remakes uh, of the original games, uh, and it is kind of one game. Uh, it's Ease One and Two, but it's basically it's basically one big game. Uh, I I couldn't imagine playing them like playing uh, one and not playing the the other right after. Uh, but yeah, after playing these games, I'm definitely a believer in this series. I'm definitely continuing on. I'm actually playing Ease Origin now uh, after finishing these, and after that, I'm going to play Oath of Falgana. So. Uh, the next three videos are probably going to be impressions videos of the of these games. Um, so, uh, anyways, with that said, uh, let's get right into it with the story. Now, Ease One, uh, you start off uh, as uh, your your character is Adol, and um, you're in the land of Asteria, and you kind of wake up um, after crashing your ship, uh, and you wake up in this village. I forget what the name of the village is now, but. Uh, you basically recuperate, and uh, basically six months ago, uh, this storm wall appeared on the island. Uh, and ever since that happened, monsters and demons are roaming the land. Uh, and basically, the game just starts off with you having to go out there, uh, finding six Book of Ease, uh, which kind of detail like a, an ancient vanished land, uh, the an ancient vanished land of Ease. Uh, and basically, from there, you're kind of doing what characters tell you to do and trying to basically save the land from the demons. Uh, it gets more complex than that, but I don't want to spoil it. Um, that said, it is a pretty simple storyline. Uh, it, it doesn't pop up too often. Uh, there are these cool cutscenes uh, in the game, uh, but it's it's kind of a bare-bones storyline, and I gotta say, I wasn't too interested in it. I found myself not really caring about what was going on. Uh, and about the characters. Uh, there are some good characters, there are, there are some good writing in this game, and for the time these games came out, uh, and Ease 2 kind of picks up right where Ease 1 leaves off, uh, ends, uh, you know, for the time these games came out, which I think was like the late 80s, uh, I mean, this was a pretty, uh, this was ahead of its time uh, in terms of its, its storytelling. Not so much nowadays, and I don't know, I found a lot of it kind of I don't know, kind of generic. Uh, I, I really wasn't too interested in the storyline. Uh, it's definitely probably one of my least favorite parts of the game. Uh, now, I know the later Ease games, I think the stories are supposed to be much better than these two, and I, I kind of got to give the game some like I, credit, because uh, back when these games came out, yeah, the storyline was probably amazing. Uh, it just doesn't hold up so well now, and it's it the, the gameplay is why I, I enjoyed these two games quite a bit. Um, visuals, uh... They look good. Uh, I think they're updated. I haven't seen what the original games look like, uh, what, like, say, the Turbo Graphics uh, games look like, but these look good. Like, that great 2D uh, art style. Uh, like, it's almost it's almost got a kind of a 16-bit look. Uh, really nice character models. The environments are really nice to look at. Uh, you know, no complaints, really, with the visuals. It's... The, the interface is very big, like it's got like your health meter and experience meter at the bottom, it's got like kind of borders, uh, so the actual game screen is pretty small, uh, which is kind of strange and takes a little bit to get used to, but uh, overall it's a good looking game. Uh, music though, oh, the music's amazing, it's epic. Uh, there's a lot of kind of slow melodic songs when you're in towns, but the music that plays when you're in dungeons or out on the field uh, it, it's it's epic like it's just like blistering guitar solos and th synth lines going on there like they're just they get you pumped They really get you pumped uh, for the combat in this game. 
Uh, the music is definitely a highlight of this of, of both these games. Like it's fantastic. Um, the gameplay is what I want to talk about most of these two games. And I'll start with Ease One because Ease Two, even though it's the story is kind of a continuation. Uh, they made a lot of improvements with the gameplay. Uh, well, I guess not too many improvements, but they made some important improvements, uh, I found. Now, uh, Ease 1, um, basically, the weird thing with this game, it's a top-down game, uh, a top-down view, like kind of like Zelda, uh, the original Zeldas. Um, but the combat, you don't just press a button and you attack with your sword. Uh, you actually have to run into the enemies, which sounds weird, and it, it is at first. Uh, but you can't fight them head on. If you run into them head on, they'll hit you. You'll hit them as well, but they'll hit you. So you gotta kinda come in from either the sides or diagonally, and it's it takes a while to get used to, especially in the beginning of the game, because uh, uh, like when you're level one, these en the enemies will just slaughter you, right, in this first beginning area, and they'll hit you constantly, and you have to kinda wait, because your health goes up if you just stand and wait. Uh, so you have to keep fighting enemies and waiting, but as soon as you get to level 2, that's when all the enemies immediately start dying in like one hit, and the game gets easier. It's one of those games that, it, oddly enough, gets easier as it goes on. Uh, there are some tough boss battles, though. I played on the normal mode, and it's it's a challenging game. Uh, it's not crazy difficult, but those bosses are gonna, are, are gonna probably kill you a few times. Luckily, though, you can save whenever you want, uh, which was... A godsend, uh, trust me, and I was very cautious with that. I was saving constantly, uh, but it's nice they gave you that. And I don't think that's in the original uh, game, but uh, the game flow, you're kind of just going from town to town. There's not too many towns. Like the game world itself, uh, the island of Hysteria, it's very small. Uh, this game's short. Both of them are very short. Uh, I think Ease 1 took me like six hours, and Ease 2 took around eight. Like they're very short games. Uh, there's not a lot of content to them. Uh, there's a few side quests here and here and there to get uh, like a weapon or a new piece of armor. Uh, there's equipment in this game. You equip better swords and better armor, um, so that's how you get stronger. And then you level up by killing enemies and gaining experience. The level cap is level 10 in Ease One, which is one of the problems I had with it because you get to level 10 around like 75% into the game, and at that point, I. Uh, leveling you're at the max level so killing enemies is a complete waste of time so I just kind of skipped enemies um, same with gold like gold up into a certain point is useful because you got to go to the shops and buy equipment but uh, like 75% into the game you'll probably have the max amount of gold and you'll never need to spend it uh, especially since like the silver sword and silver armor uh, you have to find that stuff you don't just buy that um, uh, but the dungeons uh, other than you know the field areas the main the main part of this game are the dungeons, that's where you'll spend the majority of your time, uh, and they're okay, uh, they're pretty maze-like, uh, which I'm not a huge fan of. You'll eventually kind of find your way around them, and they're not so bad once once you kind of know your way around. Uh, and the combat's, the combat's pretty fun, even, even with the bump system being weird, once you get used to it, uh, it is pretty fun, even though the hit collision detection can be a bit iffy at times, especially in Ease 1, and we'll get to Ease 2 later. Um, but the dungeons... Uh, the most annoying thing with the dungeons are, like, how you use the items. Like, you get items that you'll use throughout these dungeons, and they're kind of used to solve very simple puzzles. Uh, like a mask, for instance, that you'll, you'll, you'll wear that you can't see enemies, but you'll be, you'll be able to see, like, hidden passages. Uh, so sometimes you'll have to use that uh, in, in one of the dungeons. Uh, and it's weird, because the mask, gave, they give you it in the beginning of the game, and then the last dungeon... Uh, you have to use it again, uh, which is when you haven't hadn't used it the entire game. So, uh, and I do want to mention the last dungeon. Uh, I think it was Darm Tower. I think it's called. Uh, that's is that is a really annoying dungeon. Like it's this 20 floor long ass dungeon, uh, and right when you get to the very end of it, you realize you have to backtrack through the entire thing almost uh, to talk to this one guy and get this amulet. Like it's. I don't know, there's too much backtracking, and I wanted to skip all the enemies because I was at the max level. I don't know, the last dungeon I was not a big fan of. Um, again, it's not terrible. I mean, nothing about this game drove me crazy, but there, it, it it's definitely not a perfect game. But overall, it's definitely a solid game, and I had had a good time with it. Uh, Ease 2, I thought, was a lot better, though. Um, it plays the same, you know, you go from town to town, the world map's still small, you use the items in dungeons to solve simple puzzles. Uh, but there's a few notable improvements. First off, the leveling. Uh, you don't level 10 isn't the cap anymore. I don't even know what the cap is. Uh, level I was level 53 when I beat the game, uh, so I know it might even go higher than that. 
your your health and magic will max out, which that's the main that's the big improvement. Uh, ease one, it's only melee combat. Ease two, you've got magic uh, and rings that give you kind of different effects. Uh, so magic, you might have some fire magic, so you can shoot fireballs. You might have like a teleport magic to teleport you from place to place, which is very useful in Ease 2. Ease 1, there's just so much running back and forth. Uh, in Ease 2, with the teleport skill, it's easy to get around the world. Um, so you got that fireball spell, and there's some other magics, which I really like. I like the magic system. Although, actually, most of the bosses in Ease 2, you have to use magic to kill them, which I found kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, there's the leveling up system, so you go up to like crazy levels, and your strength will get up. Uh, gold still becomes useless at a certain point, but... Uh, those are the kind of the two main improvements, other than uh, the dungeons themselves being better in Ease 2. They're just not quite as maze-like, and they're not as tricky to figure out. Like, Ease 1 and 2, I'll be honest, I'd use a walkthrough like a couple times for each game. Like, it, they're old RPGs, so they've got that kind of, you know, I, I don't know, I guess the trope is guide dang it. Um, where it, it just, it's, there's so much, it's, there's a few things in these games that it's just so hard to figure out. Like, you had to do the, that to progress through the game. I don't know, it's it's weird. Uh, like, for instance, Darm Tower in, in Ease 1. Uh, I When I got to the top, I was completely stuck, and then it turns out I had to backtrack all through the, uh, the entire tower and talk to this guy to get the amulet and then go all the way back up. Like, I would have never known that. I thought, you know, I might have to do something else uh, where I was in the tower. Uh, so there's a few instances like that, but again, that's kind of an old RPG thing. Uh, and the hit to collision detection in uh, Ease 2 seemed better. Uh, I don't know, for some strange reason, Ease 2 just seemed to play and control a little better. Uh, controls for both of these games are, it's, like, these games control really fast, really fluid. Like, they're very fast-paced games. Uh, and I'm actually kind of glad they're both short, because, uh, I don't know, I, it's, it's nice to have a short RPG every once in a while, but... I used a 360 controller that control perfect with those, uh, and I did play these games on Steam uh, on my PC. Uh, you can get them on the PSP. I know there's a DS version. I've heard those those ones aren't so great. I don't know personally. I haven't tried those or seen them in action, but um, so yeah, I think that's about it for Ease One and Two. Uh, the bosses are pretty enjo damn enjoyable. Uh, they're challenging, but they're pretty enjoyable. I actually really like the bosses. They're kind of almost. They kind of almost play out like shoot 'em ups. Like a lot of them have these erratic bullet patterns that they send off at you, and you kind of got to run through the bullets and then get a few attacks in and, and back off and stuff like that, or use your magic in uh, ease too. Uh, so that I kind of liked. I really like the boss battles and the, just the combat in general is pretty fun. I uh, you know very simple games where I didn't really care about the storyline, but they're fun, uh, and I'm glad I started with them because if I had played like Ease Oath of Falgana or Origin, what I'm playing now, uh before this, I might not like these games as much, but uh, if you haven't played the Ease games, I definitely recommend starting with these. Uh, and I'm playing Ease Origin now, so expect a video of that soon, but uh, I'm you know, I'm full on into the series now. I'm definitely going to pick up any game that comes out in the series from now on, because yeah, uh, these two games, you know, for how old they are, they definitely hold up and they're very much worth playing. Uh, but anyways, that will do it, guys. Uh, I'll see you later.